Hey, Don. Can you hear me? Now you can hear me. If I unmute myself, I can hear you. Or you can hear no, me. I... <laughs> so was there a flyer on or a handout? I didn't see it on the uh, internal auditor job description. I emailed it out again today. Oh, today. Um, yeah, I, well, it was e it was sent out after the last meeting it was discussed in. And then I sent it out again today. Was that April? Oh, gosh. Uh, March. March, OK. Yeah, but I did send it again today. Okay. So. Hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Hello. Good afternoon, everybody. Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. Hey, Paul. I love the angle of your camera because if you sit just right, all I see is your eyeball. <laughs> it's hilarious. What, me? Yeah. Just the way you sit sometimes, I think, the angle of your camera, all I see is an eyeball. There you go. I just think it's funny. You all seeing eye. Uh, there we are. Yeah. Testing, testing. I can hear you. Thank you, Don. Hey, Dave. How are you? Good, sir. Good, sir. Thank you for having me today. Paul, at this time, Gerard's coming in. We have quorum. Okay, great. We showed up two minutes before 5.30. So. Good afternoon, all. Good afternoon. Hello.
Okay, it is now 5.30. I'm going to call the meeting to order and we do have a quorum. Uh, as you'll note, there was no agenda issued for this meeting. It is specific. And we almost call this a workshop meeting. We're discussing the job description for chief auditor. And this is being done at the request of the school board to give our insight as to our opinions regarding this position. Uh, any changes, modifications, edits that we deem appropriate, and then we take that up the line. With that said, I want to recognize that we do have several members of staff that are present and the interim superintendents as well. And I'd like to ask Dr. Savage as interim superintendent what he perceives to be the role or and not only him but also they don't see unfortunately they don't see mr persons on the call but also to find out what the perception is as to how this role will fit into the existing organizational structure uh, chair cohen i'm happy to respond to that um first off just thanks to you uh, as the chair of the committee as well as to the entire audit committee uh, it's a privilege to be here with you this evening. Um, just to recap uh, what essentially the board's journey on this. Uh, originally, this came um, because of a concern about uh, from a Auditor General report, I believe, um, or Inspector General. I'm not sure. I'd have to go back and pull this. I don't want to speak in properly on this, but about a need for independence. There was a concern in an original review of our organizational chart that what they perceived was our internal audit function was reporting to the CFO and so there was a need to have independence of that position that was conflated among with other issues um, related to the lack of a, in a different finding in a different report that the board uh, was in violation of their statutory responsibility for a period of time when they did not have an actual board auditor um, they uh, did not have any phone serving that function um, and once that requirement was in place and they had because they had been consulting, they had worked with RSM, but RSM terminated that contract and then um, they were within that gap period. So that was identified as a finding, not those two are separate in instances, but um, often those were both brought up as issues. Um, eventually, the, the the district did have a response, uh, and, and because there are, there are a number of cases where what we were calling our internal audit department was serving a very different function than what the board internal auditor would actually do. Uh, presently, we do have RSM fulfilling those services, as you all are well aware. We also at that time did not have an audit committee, so we now have an audit committee um, who has a role that's defined by policy as well. Um, we now have a, a firm that is serving in that capacity, but the board um, in their discussion uh, that that I, you know, just to summarize, they believed that with an elected superintendent uh, coming, so they were losing that um, in their mind, kind of this idea that they have an employee that is no longer their employee, but now is just a colleague. Their wonderings were how will they maintain their ability of oversight um, even though constitutionally that role was always, I mean, when the role was constitutionally developed in Florida, it was an elected position with the board still having oversight responsibilities. Um, so some of that contemplation, I think, is just more of a reflection of the change. Um, however, the board in its majority has certainly expressed an interest in having a person potentially serve in this board auditor function, which would essentially serve as a statutory person uh, entity responsible for fulfilling that function um, as being the board auditor as there as is the case in a number of districts that have either a board auditor chief auditor or in some cases an inspector general and so forth that there are a number of large districts that have that requirement um, and they meet it with that that uh, particular role some of them also have a consult with rsm or another th third party that that uh, fulfills those functions as well so the board had us bring several different versions forward to them uh, for their consideration of what the board might like to see. And that has now manifested in a um, job description that you all received that was pro uh, proposed to the board. They just wanted feedback on that as well as any structural 
you know, feedback from the audit committee about any advice they might have uh, based on their deliberations. Then you were also given two organizational charts, one that outlined what it would look like if a board auditor were to join the organization today. Um, and then another organizational chart that would demonstrate what it looks like if the board auditor were to join the organization after the November election when there's an elected superintendent um, and, and and essentially, you know, what, what should that look like? Um, so, so would that in fact maintain an RSM performing some of the types of functions they have, but now they would essentially provide that um, those findings to the board auditor. The board auditor then would follow up with the board, much like the current board attorney is as a present uh, presently an employee of the board. Um, and so would, that would kind of take the place of the board's employee and the superintendent. Now this audit function, which would allow them to provide some of that an, um, um, for the district entirely to have some level of oversight where that the same functions that are essentially carried out by other board auditors presently by statute would be the same types of things in terms of operational audit function and would work uh, with RSM. Now, it, it, that said, I think at this point, there's still a lot of opportunity for suggestions and feedback as you look at either the job description, what's entailed, the organizational chart, or just best practice related to this piece of, of how that works. And certainly the, the board would love any feedback you have and would love to hear just because you all are, that's part of your area of expertise. It's why you were selected for the audit committee. So they really want to utilize, and this is one of the functions of the audit committee to provide feedback on matters such as this. Um, I will certainly defer to the board chairman, or I'm sorry, our prior board chairman, but our, our board liaison for this particular committee, which is Mr. Persons, who I see is on the call. Um, if he would like to kind of share any of the other board member uh, feedback uh, as you deliberate on this today. Mr. Persons. Mr. Persons, I think you're on mute. Uh, Mr. Cohen, just uh, Chair Cohen, uh, just uh, the other thing is we do have other staff on the call as well. One particular person who I saw was on there is Dr. Desmore, our um, our chief financial officer, who certainly was uh, in the administration for every manner of the findings and things that were as well. So she may have some additional context to add beyond my summary, but looks like Mr. Persons is available here. Yeah, yes. sorry. I was, you, Dr. Yeah, I was yeah, at a construction meeting, but just... Uh, came here. Yeah, the board basically is definitely for making this, uh, you know, the board auditor and being behind it. So just a matter of getting the job description and y'all are a little bit better at that than than I am. So I'm just here to get your recommendation. Thank you. And Dr. Desimort? Hello, everyone. Um, no, I think uh, Dr. Savage pretty much covered the background um, related. Um, we know that it is a, you know, I think wanting the board kind of wanted to make a, a clear delineation and the auditor too between um, the board auditor statutorily required and then any other um, compliance activities that we may have within the district. So um, Ken or Dr. Savage um, gave the background. Thank you. Um, what I'd like to do is take it around through the individuals on the committee and gain your insight. I'm going to provide mine last. So I would welcome, uh, starting with Mr. Carrington, any thoughts you have? <clears throat> um, just, just a few questions, actually. Um, on the on the minimum qualifications, uh, I had um, whether it should be governmental audit under um, eight, the minimum qualifications, eight years of audit experience in public sector. Should that be government audit or is that too limited? Um, same kind of question under the knowledge and skills. Um, actually, one question it says, um, the third one item, the third bullet says knowledge of federal state. Should that be state of Florida or just state? 
Um, and then actually the next bullet um, refers to the Sunshine Law. I think, I, if I'm not mistaken, I could be wrong. I think more um, Florida is not the only state with Sunshine Law. So do we want it to be Florida Sunshine Law or just Sunshine Law? Those were just the, the general overarching thoughts that I had on, on, on the position. Thank you very much, Mr. Carrington. Um, Mr. Davis? Yeah, th thank you, Mr. Cohen. So yeah, in reviewing the actual responsibilities and job functions, I think it's uh, relatively comprehensive. I don't have any um, immediate feedback. Um, the One of the questions I did have around this chief auditor role, and I'm trying to remember back to where we saw the org chart is this going to have any direct report positions under it? Is it going to have any resp supervisory responsibilities associated with the position? Uh, from what I saw in the organizational chart, it does appear that the position may eventually have individuals reporting up into that role, depending on whether they take the audit function, whether they bring it in-house, post-source, or outsource the audit function. Um, so there is that potential that does exist it is a direct report to the school board okay so, no in question. that yes and then in that scenario the only thing that i think may be worth mentioning is in your other job function some sort of communication some sort of responsibility around um identifying talent to to fill any supervisory or direct report related roles um since that will be a role of the chief auditor in that scenario if they have supervisory reports. That was the, my only feedback. Thank you very much, Mr. Davis. Uh, Mr. Severson? Am I on? Can you hear me, Chair? Oh, yes, okay. you are. Yeah. Uh, one of my questions was in this, in this process, and we have the audit board itself, uh, when we get to the end and we uh, say for the good of the order, and there are issues that are brought up by board members, then how would that auditor be tasked with uh, actually doing the deed and then reporting back to the audit committee or to the school board? What uh, What's the vehicle for that? The way I saw the organizational chart, it's a direct report to the school board and a dotted line, I won't even call it report, but coordination with the audit committee. Um, it also indicates in here that reports shall be issued simultaneously to the superintendent, the audit committee, and the school board. Got it. So you raised a very interesting question about that reporting structure, how that will work. And I apologize, legal is also a part of that um, with whistleblower activity. So there would obviously be an interaction as well with the legal department. And it says here, manage the district fraud, waste and abuse reporting hotline to ensure the department uh, uh, receives the information. So I kind of, that's kind of along the same lines that I'm thinking here is, this is, this is a pretty big job description that, uh, I mean, <clears throat> it could get out of hand pretty quick. And ergo, I think the uh, prior question, are there gonna be people that are working for him or with him? Uh, I think could be probably, added to this job description to say that there are uh, additional assets that may be required at a future date. So, Mr. Chairman, if I may, I could answer some questions. Yes, Mr. Yes. Um, the um, hotline is managed by legal, but when there are some things that would have to go to the auditors, such as waste, fraud, and abuse, it would be provided to them for them to be able to um, you know, do their investigation and, and respond to, because the hotline gets more than just waste, fraud, and abuse. It gets employee complaints, it gets retaliation claim, and then it gets many, many more things. So I wanted to make sure that was clear. And in response to that, may I? Uh, yes, please. In response to that, who does the, who does the delegation or the, uh, uh, basically the delineation of who hears what? In other words, does this audit board only hear issues that are pertinent to the fraud, waste, and abuse, or are they only pertinent 
to, you know, can you tell me a little more about what the guidelines are? Uh, please. Bruno? So waste, fraud, and abuse would definitely be something that goes to the board auditor for them to decide as to how to handle. So when it comes in, um, legal will just basically look at it for legal sufficiency, work with the board auditor, and then they can determine how it will be handled, if they're going to handle it in-house or send it outside. Anything that is not waste, fraud, and abuse, which would be more of the... Um, different types of claims, employee claims, discipline claims, um, uh, you know, just all different things that happens that will be handled by legal and then legal determines where that will be um, sent to for an investigation if necessary. Does that okay. answer your question, Mr. Severson? Uh, partially. Uh, <clears throat> it, it partially does in, in the current situation, but I think in, in terms of complete uh, disclosure, would there be a better venue for uh, someone from the audit committee to also have some input into where those complaints are channeled? Because if you just have the legal department, you don't have another set of eyes looking on it, then things can get buried and all of a sudden it looks like there's, you know, a conspiracy going on. So uh, I just open it up for discussion. Uh, it, I may be offline here, but I'm just, uh, hoping to get, gain a little knowledge in that situation. Any discussion? Uh, I'd, I'd like to, yes, if I wrong. could chime in a little yes. bit, uh, both the auditor and the legal will be underneath the board. So the board chair will be, you know, the first line of communication when these things come in. And then our legal right now is pretty well handling most of it. and they let us know i mean we're, we're informed so it's uh nothing's really getting thrown under the bus we have one-on-ones with the legal so i feel very comfortable and um i know i'll, I'll want a one-on-one -on -one set up with the auditor too whenever we get this position if possible too so hopefully we can set that up yep thank you that answers the question okay do you have anything else mr Severson? i do not thank you Mr. Ward. Uh, good evening. So uh, from what I can gather, this is a new position that has not previously existed or been filled before. Is that correct? Mr. Persons? Uh, I believe we did have sort of an auditor. I mean, not quite anything exactly like this before. And the auditor we had pretty much reported to the superintendent more than he did to the board, to my knowledge. I could be wrong, uh, but to pay if, if you have that, or Ken, Mr. Dr. Savage, if you can elaborate on that a little bit, but we have not had this position. We, we have farmed it out to RSM. So that was where we've been working the last few years. That was sort of the sense that I have as being part of this committee for the last year or so, but there is an internal audit function within the school system currently. So I'm, I'm wondering how that, who that reported to and how it functioned without having a chief auditor in the past. Mr. Ward, I think that requires a definition as to what the duties and responsibilities are of that position. And Mr. Gatewood, could you share your insight on that, please? Yes, sir. Um, our, my department, we report to Dr. Desimore under business services. We spend a lot of our, um, mainly what we work with is the school bookkeepers with the internal funds, as well as their monthly reconciliation, making sure we're up to date on all the, the signers on the bank accounts. We do do some, some I know, as requested, we will do some other audits and things like that that were directed by like Dr. Desimore, maybe some key card stuff, uh, training of new bookkeepers. Like yesterday, we had a year-end workshop for the bookkeepers where we went over the year-end closing. We've been in the process this year. We were using Manatee Accounting Software, which was a DOS-based program that we've had for like 25 years. We've actually updated to School Cash now this year. 
where parents now have the ability to make payments online and things along those lines. We're also do a lot with the uh, fee-based programs with their spreadsheet, the recording of um, all their fees and payments and things along those lines. All right. I guess the, the last question I have is, is this position responsible for financial and operational audits or strictly financial audits? Um, Dr. Desimores, uh, Mr. Persons, or Dr. Savage, if any of the three of you could please answer that question. I believe they would be. Yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll defer to you. Go ahead, Dr. Desimore. And you're, you're referring to the board auditor position, is that correct? That's correct. Um, well, I would, the board auditor position, I would imagine would do any and all of the above based on what the risk assessment, risk analysis is and, and will be and what the board and the audit committee provide direction related to. So I think the board auditor would be responsible for any and all of the above. And as I understand it, or at least as had originally been discussed, working kind of in concert with um, RSM in order to actually conduct those audits. Okay, because the observation I have, again, being on the committee for the last period of time, is that RSM tends to function more as an operational audit. At least that's some of the feedback that I've gotten from them in the past. And looking at this job description, it appears to me that this is primarily a financial auditor position. Well, by statute, we're, we're required to have an internal auditor to go over all the different areas, both operational and financial. And how we distribute that between RSM and our, uh, this new position, you know, will be worked out. But uh, I think it really will be depending on what's actually coming before the district as problems and things to look into. I'm sure the position will take on a life of itself once we get it going there, because different board members will have different areas that they will want information on or will be given into it. And of course, uh, again, the whistleblower, you know, finance and fraud. So a lot of that's gonna be going on. So it's a little hard. I, I, it should be an open-ended more than just financial uh, in the job description by far. They may be end up being mostly financial, but he needs to be able to do it all or she. Uh, Dr. Savage, I see your hand is raised. Yes, just want to uh, add to what the, my uh, two colleagues have said that, uh, you know, the major function that's listed under the audit uh, chief auditor job description to assist members of school board and district management with providing assurance services related to effectiveness of risk management and internal controls to enhance performance and accountability of every functional and program area of the district by promoting economy, efficiency and effectiveness and compliance within a control focused environment. Ensure that the internal audit function operates according to section and the pertinent statute that calls for that piece. So that to me very much reads as operational as well. Uh, I think it's all encompassing in that sense. That's how I interpret that major function. While they certainly have to have the financial side, which you see kind of outlines some of the specific requirements that would uh, credential a person to have that. My read is very much that it would take the place of that uh, statutory responsibility for the operational aspect as well. Um, just to, to just to give you a little bit of background context on these job descriptions, these are patterned after all the biggest districts in Florida that have this function. So it's literally taking and extracting the very same things that are required. If you were to go to any of the big district websites, such as Miami Dade, Palm Beach, um, Broward, and so forth, and you look, you'll find examples of not only what the job does, but the published reports that they issue, and that includes both operational, financial. Um, it's all very transparent. Uh, so, so those are, and all the qualifications and so forth, were basically lifted the highest level of qualifications from all of those job descriptions. Uh, to build this job description. So it very much is patterned after that. And that function is certainly more than just a financial audit. 
Uh, but again, as, as Dr. Desmore and uh, Mr. Persons has said as well, we're, that's, that I just echo those sentiments, but wanted to kind of draw that specifically within the job description to kind of call out that, that uh, desire. Thank you for that. I appreciate it. That's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Wood. Um, before I go, does anybody else want to voice any additional opinions regarding this job description? I'm going to try to take this job description from a different perspective. Um, I made it public knowledge that I have served as president of two chapters of the Institute of Internal Auditors. I was formerly a chief auditor, um, both in private sector and public sector. Um, I have a number of concerns with the job description as it stands. And I'll start with minimum qualifications. The first line alone, bachelor's degree in accounting, auditing. There are very few schools that offer a degree in auditing. The IA has been for years trying to create that as a major and I think uh, there may be one in Louisiana. I think, I don't know if it's Tulane or LSU offers it. Rutgers tried putting it in place in New Jersey. Um, there are not many schools that offer that. So having that in there, I don't think that adds any value. Um, the second sentence, certified public accountant. You also have somebody who could be from Canada. They're not a CPA, they're a chartered auditor. Different designation, same credentials. Um, the certified internal auditor is not a state designation or license. It is a national license. And actually can almost be perceived as an international certification. Um, some of the other designations I agree with. Um, I don't see here several other designations that would be beneficial to have in that capacity. Um, eight years of audit, and I agree with what Mr. Carrington said, uh, public sector. Public sector means that you're dealing with an SEC or a public corporation. We are not a public corporation. We are a governmental entity. That should be part of the job description, having that experience. Is it beneficial for somebody to have public sector audit experience? Yes but they should absolutely have governmental sector audit experience. The supervisory skills, absolutely. At that level, they should have that, those qualifications. Going to the second section, knowledge, skills, and abilities, which speaks to knowledge of governmental auditing, AICPA, et cetera. It also talks to statement of auditing standards and internal auditors professional standards. We have to be very, very careful. We do not follow Yellow Book. Yellow Book is governmental audit standards. We don't follow it. There's Red Book for private sector, Yellow Book for public and governmental sector. We don't follow it. We don't have it in place. We don't do anything with Yellow Book. So if we're going to go in that direction, we need to start gearing ourselves up to set up compliance with the yellow book. Um, reporting, there are two levels of reporting. Organizationally, I fully agree that needs to report to the school board. Do we want the school board chair to have to authorize vacation and sick time for their chief auditor? I don't know if that's worthwhile. I don't know if that's an administrative role, maybe of the superintendent saying, Yes, we're going to document that you requested this day off or this week off, and we need to have support staff available to cover for you in your absence. The part that really gives me a lot of concern is where we're talking about it's a one year position. We had the same issue with this audit committee. We were all appointed for one year. We could not meet again until after the election and after the organizational meetings, and we didn't regroup again for several months after the election. We could put ourselves in a position where there is a gap. 
election occurs, at what point do we suddenly go out back out to market again, try to find this qualified person and say, okay, the person we have is qualified based on the job performance evaluation of the former school board. And now you have a potentially new school board stepping in saying, nope, don't like this individual. We need, now need to go out and find a replacement for this individual. I think we're going to find that this is not going to be an easy position to fill. Not knowing the salary, nor should we know the salary, it's going to be a very challenging role to fill. Continuing through my thoughts, uh, manage the agenda, meetings, and work of the audit committee in accordance with its charter. That's the role of the audit committee chair in conjunction with the school board. And if the school board so designates the chief auditor could, to perform that role, there should be absolutely a, an agreement. But that away takes the independence away from the audit committee if this individual is managing the agenda of the audit committee. Um, identifying the report, who reports to this position is important. We have the same thing. You have a replacement at the chief auditor position. They don't like the staff that they inherited. What ends up happening? Do they now say you're all terminated and I want to start from scratch? And again, with it only being a one year position, are we going to have a revolving door as their staff members? If they don't play nice with RSM, do they have the ability to recommend the termination of the contract with RSM? Continuing through, and again, I am not an attorney, but the physical requirements, in my opinion, may put us in violation of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Saying that they have to have balance. They have to be able to climb, crawl, crouch. I'm sorry, if you're in a wheelchair, you don't have that ability, but that does not mean you cannot perform that role to a high level and a high standard. Um, the other job functions has me totally confused. I, I don't understand how the chief auditor's role is to, to maintain positive communication with parents community members and students. I didn't think it was their job responsibility to meet with the public unless so authorized by the school board to do so and with the proper training to do so. An internal auditor is not a public speaker. And I don't know if the school board wants them in this position to be imparting their thoughts to the community on certain key issues. I think that role falls to the school board and the school board to determine the role from a communication standpoint to the public. This is the administration has a communication person. So too, I'm sure the school board would want to have an individual who's responsible for speaking to the community, parents and students. Um, you already spoke to the tie in to the election. And again, I spoke my piece about that. The last concern I have is the overall title. And I think that's what got us in trouble with the inspector general's office. I think they confused internal audit as performed by Mr. Gatewood's department and an internal audit function. These two functions as was described are very separate and distinct. I think the better title for this position would be Chief Risk Officer. We already speak over and over again within this job description about understanding of risk management. <coughs> that individual should be very cognizant in risk and the risk components, which speaks to what Mr. Ward said, financial risk, compliance risk, operational risk, technological risk, and all other appropriate risks that exist. That does not take away from safety and security, which has their own risk role. This is a chief risk officer who also should be entitled to attend any and all committee meetings that they are understanding from a 
staff standpoint, what directions they are going and for them to create an ever evolving risk assessment. So if they attend the meeting and understand that there's going to be a change in process, procedure, policy, and has impact on the risk controls within the school district, they should be privy to it and be able to offer their thoughts. They should not be writing policy. They are auditing policy, but they should actually be able to be proactive in providing their thoughts on the impact of that policy change. With that, those are my thoughts on this document. Um, as you can tell, I spent quite a bit of time with this, as did all the other members of the committee, and I greatly appreciate all their insight. But I think this requires a lot more thought than bringing this forward to the school board as it presently stands. With that, I'm going to bring it back to the other members of the audit committee for your thoughts. Mr. Chairman. Yes, Ms. Bruno. Ms. Chairman, uh, I can clarify a couple of things that I think would be helpful if I may. Yes, please. So with this would be um, a position that I think the school board will be negotiating a contract with that individual, I, I believe, and we can verify that with Dr. Desma and, and Dr. Savage. But if it is just like the um, board attorney, we can certainly um, address vacation and the years and whether and how this person's position is renewed per the contractual terms. Um, there is a process already that the board has for um, vacation requests and sick leave requests that the superintendent and the board attorney follow currently. And I would imagine that the board auditor would do the same thing. Um, and I do agree with you, Mr. Chairman, with regards to um, the title. Um, my and I have shared this with the board in one-on-ones, is the um, use of the word chief to begin with because of the fact that normally the chiefs are individuals who report directly to the superintendent. So my concern has been to have a title that has chief in it and individuals not understanding or recognizing that this individual is uh, not an employee of the superintendent, but rather an employee of the board. Um, so I don't know if there's something, um, if the audit committee would have a suggestion in terms of th that word chief, which is um, what was concerning to me. And then just for you to know, uh, and the audit committee to know, we do have a director of risk management at this time. So I just put that forward for you to be aware um, for your consideration. I thank you. And again, here's where we're going to get ourselves in trouble with the titles that we put forward. And the inspector general will most likely give us a difficult time because they are reading a job title and making an assumption off of the job title. I'm surprised they did not write us up for having a chief risk manager in place and saying that that now crosses the line because that is a staff level position reporting into the superintendent. I want to make it, and I apologize for the, the use of language I'm going to use now, we need to almost dumb down certain aspects of this so that when they come in and we are audited by governmental entities, that it is so crystal clear to them they cannot make the mistake. And I think we're going to keep going through that with the title of chief auditor, and they're going to continue to be confused as to Mr. Gatewood's role and what this role is because you're going to see auditor after the name. The same thing, and I'm glad you brought it out, Ms. Bruno, about risk. But the world I come from, chief risk officer was always the key title. Internal auditor always reported into the chief risk officer. In some cases, in the banking world, your chief credit officer reported directly to the chief risk officer because they understand more about the risk than just one component. <coughs> so that's why I'm suggesting that we refocus again on this job description, on title, et cetera, before we bring this forward to the school board. I don't disagree with the 
concept. I think that we are almost bending over and bending over backwards to appease the Inspector General who really doesn't understand the different roles within the school district as it currently occurs because the Institute of Internal Auditors has a clear directive for independent outsourced internal audit. It's an approved international guideline. And I don't understand how it is that the Inspector General's office at the state of Florida is the only one who doesn't get it. Because the school board should never have been put in this position by an Inspector General's office, who obviously did not dot their eyes and cross their T's and shame on them. And I know we're on public record right now, but shame on them for those errors in their report. Because I don't think they would appreciate if an auditor came in over them and found the flaws within their department. And yes, they are required to have that done by the Institute of Internal Auditors. I believe it's every five years. With that, Dr. Savage, I see your hand is raised. Uh, yes, uh, Chair Cohen, thank you so much. I uh, just wanted to make mention of a couple things. Just um, first off, just thank to all the committee members for all the, the feedback uh, as well. Uh, it's, it's always good to hear it. I think one of the things that I want to make sure we, I just want to kind of validate um, uh, Chair Cohen that you mentioned was the, the the verbiage that we use, the job titles that we have, the specific functions that that it, I do, I would agree that we have to be very specific in what people do, what those boundaries are, and so forth. Because, you know, as we said, Mr. Gatewood, by being called the director of internal audit, um, you know, for us, really, it's a it's they're they're providing the district central office quality assurance over the controls the financial controls being being um uh that are in place out at the school levels where they are collecting fees in more of a franchise level basis where each of those individual schools there are a host of events all being run by those and the bookkeepers collecting those pieces so it really is a method um administratively for us to ensure that what we say we are going to do out there in the schools that those funds are in fact being collected properly and that they're testing it, utilizing those those uh, standards, as well as um, uh, uh, Attorney Dupree Bruno bringing up the, our risk management. That as an organization, because we are a very large organization with many many layers of in, of school deployment, departmental deployment, and so forth, very important that we have managerial structures in place that monitor in a risk environment according to these same practices. And that does not mean they are taking the place of the board internal auditor. It's just being very transparent and clear in our language of what we say. Uh, so I really appreciate that. The other thing I just want to highlight for the group is that as we look at the districts that have done this work, uh, it really is the board auditor. It's it, what it often is doing is they are taking on the audit function for the organization. So while they're called the board auditor, if you go to their websites and you look at their at their documentation of how their organizational charts and how their uh, different published reports are derived, what you see is that the audit function really is just living in that space. And it's, and it's a, you know, they're, it's, it's, they, they're different things. Like in Palm Beach, for example, you do an inspector general, Miami Dade, uh, while they do call it a chief auditor, all of there are a great many functions that occur over there. So under that auditor, if you were to go to Miami Dade and look at their particular chart, what you're going to find is all of their investigations of employee matters fall under that. That is where their investigations are done. Uh, they have school-based financial audits, charter school audits, IT audits, um, all the operational audits. If you were to see it, all of that is occurring in that space, and it's uh, articulated. Not only does Miami-Dade have that as an organizational chart, but they all have about a, it's a, anywhere from four to 600 pages. It's a manual that outlines exactly what each group does and what they don't do, so that there is clarity about exactly how all these pieces work together in that organization. So that's just one example, but there are a number of them that do this. I just want to bear mention that the vast majority of districts in Florida actually do not have a board auditor function. Um, and so you will find iterations of this all over the place, whether it's uh, to the superintendent, whether it is uh, to the CFO, and even among the largest 10 districts in Florida, some of the, the data we made sure to provide was that there are other occurrences where the district internal audit function is directly reporting to the CFO as well. So I think it just wanted to validate some of what uh, Mr. Cohen had said in terms of that piece. Um, you know, obviously 
we're all on the record here as well. So just trying to be as respectful as I can of all those pieces, but clarity of language uh, and documentation, a lot of that's out there. If, if the committee at some point would love to review how another district that's been doing these for quite some time is doing it, we can certainly do that as well. But I, I think hopefully uh, Mr. Persons, you know, he's uh, our liaison with the board. So I think the board was desiring a feedback from this committee. I think you have an abundance of that um, as we kind of go through that, but also just want to give the opportunity for Mr. Persons uh, if there's any specific questions that on behalf of the board, I was trying to capture as much sentiment as I could in the notes. Um, but uh, Mr. Persons, I don't know if you had anything else you wanted to offer or just question to the committee based on their work. Well, just basically whether the state is right or wrong, the finding said we need an internal auditor that reports to the board, not to the superintendent. They didn't go into great detail as to what that internal auditor should be called, what they should do. But we're, uh, you know, that was a finding. And the one thing they do is they look back and see, did you correct that finding? So I think we're sort of st stuck in this position here. How we define it is what we're talking about now. I, I like that. It's definitely going to be mostly risk. I mean, there's no doubt about it. Um, so what we call it, it could be anything. I mean, I, I'm fine with calling it board internal auditor. I mean, because that's that's what they said we needed. But whether it's a chief, a director, I mean, I think some people were worried about uh, chiefs make X amount of money. So if we don't call him a chief, then why are we giving him so much money? But we don't call the attorney a chief. Maybe we should. Anyway, uh, so they would be a, a title. That's our board attorney. And, you know, this would be our board auditor. And like you say, we'd have to negotiate the contract. Uh, Chair, you came up with a lot of uh, good points there. Uh, several of y'all did um, on the job description. I saw Dr. Savage feverishly writing things down. I'm sure uh, Attorney Bruno was also, even though I can't see her, I just got a smiling face looking at me. So I, I just think we just need to go ahead and work on this some more um, and move ahead. Down the road, I see where we could possibly you know expand this position and do away with our external auditor or keep it the way it is i mean i'm not sure what direction the board will go if i'll even be on the board when that happens but i do believe we need to get an internal auditor um as the state said we needed to and move forward from there thank you dr Dismore, is this your hand is raised Yes, I just wanted to add in that the, um, the 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 external auditor. I mean, these these are two very different things between an internal auditor and an external auditor. The external audit, um, the external financial audit, and external several other audits are defined by statute. So um, it is a very different um, function from this board internal auditor. So the board internal auditor would never replace the external financial auditor who right now is M MSL. And I just wanted to um, point that out. I, I, I'm sorry, I misspoke a little bit there. I, when I said external, I was actually referring to our internal auditor, RSM, who is not a district here in the district. So um, thank it. you for okay. correcting yes. me there. I, I, I misspoke, so thank you for clarifying yes. that. Yes. Okay, all right, understood. Thank you. And Ms. Bruno and Dr. Savage, since you were both taking down notes, and obviously I have my notes written, if you want to pass by your notes to me, I'm more than happy to help consolidate what you have and what I brought forward. And I also wrote down the notes brought forth by my colleagues on the committee, which I really appreciate their insight as well. And obviously this is a recorded meeting, so we do have the recording of this meeting as well for all discussions that occurred. Paul, I also, um, when it records, I can print a transcript. It's not 100% perfect every single word you said, but it does uh, by person re provide a transcript I can print of who said what, if that would help anybody with their notes also. I would leave that to the discretion of uh, 
Ms. Bruno and Dr. Savage. And obviously we will put all that together for you, Mr. Persons, for presentation to the school board. So you'll have that in your possession. Thank you. Um, Mr. Persons, I know I posed this question at our last meeting. Is there a general timeline both for creation of this position and also for the comfort of the inspector general that we are taking their findings seriously? I don't know if we have a specific timeline. Uh, the board just directed us to move forward. Um, I would have to go back and check unless uh, attorney Bruno remembers if there was a specific timeline. Uh, or, so, um, Mr. Person, Mr. Cohen, if I yes. may, the um, board really wanted to see if they can have um, somebody in place by um, November pri or prior to at least the elected superintendent. Don't know if that is possible, but that was their um, original goal is to have something in place prior to the elected superintendent. Could you share with us what the rationale for that was? I All I can tell you is that that was part of their discussion is that they would like to have their board internal auditor um, prior to the elected superintendent who no longer will be um, reporting to them. Um, and we will obviously have you know, a different relationship. So they, they wanted to have somebody um, installed prior to. That's, that's all I can share from the discussion from the dais. Okay. And I, I would have liked to, to agree to that. We're, we're going into new charted waters. I'm not going to say uncharted, but new charted waters with an elected superintendent. And we feel the internal board auditor would be very important just as the uh, board attorney is. I think that's going to raise yet another question. Is this position going to, with them being brought in prior to the November election, several seats are up for election in November for school board members. Does that mean we're going to continue to have a position where that the new school boards will be inheriting the existing board auditor? Or are we going to have a short term board auditor who is then going to be potentially January or so after reorganization occurs? And I know that usually happens after the election, but once all the dust settles and everything else, are we now going to say, thank you very much? You served your role for two months and we're going to reconsider that, or is that individual going to be running in their one year role from November? argument say to November. I'm I'm not the legal expert, but I would believe if the contract says one year, it's it's one year. You know, I'm sure there's always cause or something like that, but uh I don't see any change coming for whatever length of time is negotiated with the uh internal auditor any more than anyone else uh from the board. I mean it would be the board that would have to definitely decide that. Again, Ms. Bruno, it's something for us to seek your legal opinion regarding. Yeah, I, I actually completely, Mr. Person said it perfectly. These are uh, contractual terms. So if the term is for one year, uh, it would be for one year unless there is some type of cause uh, for an early termination. Okay, then I'm going to voice a concern with having that position filled around the November timeline, that position really should be filled around September. Because once the election is hot and heavy towards the very end, the school board members are probably not going to be able to avail themselves should they not be pleased with the existing internal auditor. I want to put that out for um, advertisement. And now we're putting them in November where they are trying to acquiring seat on the board and also at the same time trying to interview and bring forward a new potential board auditor. So if we're going to do this, it needs to happen around this 
August, September timeline, not October, November, when it is way too close to election. And also, this way, when the vote occurs for that position, it's occurring with an existing school board that went through that interview process, not potentially where it's happening right after the election and the new school board member can come forward and very clearly and fairly say, I was not part of that interview process. I don't know anything about any of these candidates. I don't know why this candidate was chosen to be the best available. I think we expose ourselves. So if we go back to August and September, I would firmly agree with doing it prior to election. My thought is I would rather see it happen after the election with the new school board making that final determination since they are going to be the ones inheriting that internal audit for the full cycle. I would say that we just need to move forward and see what the timeline works out to be. I mean, it may be we don't get it any qualified candidates and we can't even do it before the, the election. I mean, it's uh, I think what we need to focus on here is getting this job description correct. And then presenting it to the board and then having it advertised and see where we go from there. Um, I can't speak for the board. I'm personally um, I just want to get the right person and I don't think it's going to matter a whole lot whether it's before or after. Um, I don't see a lot of things changing there. Okay, thank you, Mr. Person. Um, we do have another audit committee meeting scheduled in the month of May. That is to discuss the internal audit prepared by RSM. Um, I would prefer that we not take up additional time at that time to go back over the job descriptions. Uh, what I am comfortable doing is once myself, Dr. Savage, and Ms. Bruno put our heads together and put together a composite of all the recommendations to this document. Please submit your thoughts directly through Dawn because we are not allowed to communicate with each other. And therefore, what I'm going to recommend is that we have a meeting as early in June as possible to go through all the recommended changes and hopefully at that point, be prepared to make a formal recommendation to the school board that either at their June or July meeting is going to occur and therefore then they could start putting it out for advertisement in the appropriate areas to see if they can bring forth the most qualified candidates. Do I have, is, do I have everybody on the committee's agreement with that thought process? <clears throat> Agreed. I think it makes sense. Um, if you can, I would really appreciate everybody getting to dawn as soon as possible and by as soon as possible by Friday, available dates in the very beginning of June so that we can meet specifically to discuss the job description and hopefully put final recommendations together for the school board. I know that we have several members of the committee who unfortunately were unable to make it this evening. And I will make the same request of them through Dawn, please. Yeah, I will contact um, Butch and Andrew. Um, I can tell you there's board meetings on June 3rd and June 18th. So um, I'm, I would have to look at the district calendar, see what committee meetings there are that, that week. I don't have it up in front of me right now. Um, also, speaking of meetings, and I'm, this is a little off topic, but I need your input tonight. RSM wants to do one-on-ones with each audit committee member on May 17th for approximately half hour. I'm not sure if they are going to be here in the building or if it's going to be by teams. Um, they will send out the invite to you, but I need to get a preferred time um, on that day to meet from each of you before we leave. We can wrap up the meeting and then we can you can let me know um, what time you want on that day and then I'll reach out to the, those that aren't here to get a time from them. I just wanted to get that in there before we close out and I said, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> Thank you, Don. And if we could find out whether those that meeting must occur in person or whether they could do it by phone or Zoom. 
Um, I'll check back on my emails right now and see if um, Weiss has let me know. Um, but if not, I'll find out from him tomorrow. Because yeah, I know a number of individuals on this committee have full time jobs, and I don't know if they have the ability to break away during the course of their business day to spend half an hour to meet with RSM or potentially a Zoom or a phone call. Maybe something that may be doable. Okay. And I don't want to lose the inside of any of the committee members. Because I think all every single individual on this committee drinks tremendous value. And I think we need to ensure that all of them are able to offer their thoughts. Um, yeah, I the one on one with our film, I believe, is to discuss the risk management with the future audits for next year. Um, to get everybody's thoughts of where we should look at next year for audits. Thank you. Um, the other question that we had, were you able to find out from RSM, were there any findings that would require us to meet in person as opposed to via Zoom? Um, I'm going to defer that to um, Mr. P. Bruno because I know Weiss and she were talking about um, what may be in the audit and I don't believe I've seen an email from Weiss about what is going to happen there. Um, so, um, Don, thank you. Um, Don, I it broke up just a little bit. We're talking about the um, security audit, correct? Yes. Yes. So a question was raised about what can and can't be shared um, in the sunshine and outside of the sunshine with regard to the security audit. Uh, in the past, we have said for security audits that it's something that can be done outside of the sunshine because it, it's um, addressing security concerns. However, what was brought to my attention is um, some concerns by other districts where they actually had audit findings because some things in a security meeting, the Auditor General felt was not really a security uh, question or matter, and it should have been done in the sunshine, and some things um, were, and it should be outside of the sunshine, uh, all from the same meeting, the same report. So I am in the process of uh, evaluating this a little bit more just to see exactly what transpired with these other districts with regard to the security. We can schedule it. However, in terms of how it's going to um, take place and what parts will be in the sunshine, what parts will not be in the sunshine, I will need a little bit more time to um, evaluate this given the information that was brought to my attention. I'm going to make this request not as an audit committee chair, but as an individual. I would much rather deal with the wrath of the inspector general's office for quote unquote violating sunshine than risk any safety to any student, parent, employee, or anybody else within Lee County. And I have no qualms about standing toe to toe with them. In, in that comment that I'm currently making. So I am hoping that core heads and martyr heads will prevail on this. And even if it has the smallest possibility of creating exposure to any of those groups, I would hope that we can operate out of the Florida sunshine. Thank you, Mr. Cohen. Your point is well taken. Um, and I only uh, other concern that I would. I'm sorry, uh, Ms. Bruno, you're breaking up. But so, Ms. Bruno, you've broken up. Oh, can you hear me? I'm having difficulty. I don't know if the rest of the members are having difficulty. Yeah, yeah not yet. Up. Not yet. Can you hear me now? You're coming in a little bit clearer now, yes. Are you there, Ms. Bruno? And I think we lost her, Mr. Cohen. I believe we have. Okay, we'll wait to hear Ms. Bruno's thoughts on that. Um, she can put that together 
in some communication through Dawn. And we'll handle it in that way. Um, as it stands right now, unless we hear otherwise, we're planning on having a Zoom call to discuss the audit findings and then a determination to be made as to if we need to operate within confidentiality and outside of the Florida Sunshine. With that, is there anything for the good of the order? Oh. Paul, um, the audit committee one on ones with RSN will be virtual and that's all audit committee only everybody else that coming down here. So. Perfect, thank you. And I hope the uh, members of the committee heard that, that <coughs> you do not have to physically come to Colonial for that meeting so you can do it virtually. So prepare your schedules accordingly and just notify Dawn of your availability based on the bigger virtual meeting with RSM. And so on what hours are they looking to do this between what time and what time? Um, I am guessing normal business hours, eight to well, eight to four. Um, and, and it's only a half hour, so they will work around your schedule. So it doesn't all have to be in the morning, afternoon. Um, just whenever you're available, I can put you in on the schedule and I'll email it all to them and they will send you the invite to the meeting because Weiss is setting up the actual virtual appointment. Okay, and if you can, if you can at least designate two or three half hour segments during the course of your day that you can be available. I would hate for somebody to just put down one half hour interval and three people need that same half an hour or opted to put it at the same half an hour. We will try to accommodate as best as possible everybody's work schedule to make sure that it's fair to all. Is there anything else done to keep us on track? Um, no, nope, that's all I need from you. Okay, thank you. Uh, excuse me, Chair? Yes. I have a question. Yes, Is the Chair. next audit committee meeting next week, Wednesday? No, it'll be on the 14th. So. Okay. So, I'm almost behind. Hold on. I have I had the next week. When it's on a, it's on Tuesday, so it'll be um two weeks from next Tuesday. No, a week from next Tuesday. The next Tuesday, I believe, is a board meeting. Yes. So it'll be the following Tuesday at 5:30. The 14th. The 14th, okay. yeah. Thank you for the clarification. Um, also, I want to thank Mr. Carrington. He did attend, unfortunately, the last audit committee meeting and learned after the fact that we were not meeting on that date. Um, please, if anybody is questioning whether or not we're going to have a meeting, please contact Dawn and to verify whether or not we will have that. I do not want to ever see anything happen. And I greatly appreciate you making the time, Mr. Carrington, to break away from your job in order to attend that meeting. Um, for the next meeting, we will have a full agenda as we normally do. There'll be approval of minutes. We will go through the full agenda as we normally do. As I said, this was more of a workshop meeting. Our meeting in June will again be more of a workshop to discuss the job description. There will not be a formal agenda issued for that meeting. It will be strictly to discuss the job description. With that said, is there anything else for the good of the order? Hearing none, I want to take a motion to adjourn at 6.39 p.m. So moved. Can I hear a second, please? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you all very much for your time, and we'll see each other again on the 14th. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Thank you.